Hi, welcome to a beautiful autumnal evening in Chesterfield. The sun's out, it's about 18 degrees uh, air temperature and the pond is also 18 degrees. What we're going to look at today is the outside koi fry grow on tank. I've done a couple of videos over the last few, uh, couple of weeks about it so if you want to uh, find out some more details about it check out those videos and you can see all the equipment, all the setup and some nice pictures of the fry in there as well. But what we're going to look at is the Cloverleaf 1 kilowatt heater and it's that time of year where people start to get a bit excited and uh, confrontational on Facebook or whatever group you're looking at regarding to heat, not to heat, all that sort of stuff. My mindset on this is if you can afford to heat your pond, if you can afford to heat anything, do so. If you want to heat it, do so. If you don't, don't. It has no detrimental long-term effects on the koi or the fry. I do it for several reasons from keeping the filter bacteria working to keeping the water at a reasonable temperature where I can treat but more importantly a temperature that is suitable for the koi to continue eating, growing, swimming around and enjoying life. You don't have to heat your koi pond, you don't have to cover it but if you want to, do. If you don't, then don't bother. But don't influence others on what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do. A lot of things in the koi hobby is contentious and up for debate, but at the end of the day you do what suits yourself, do what suits your own setup. This is how I heat my grow tank and this is how much it costs me to heat my grow tank. Unfortunately I can't comment on anybody else's costs, running costs and setup because everybody's is different and the one biggest characteristic on everybody's setup is the weather. I'm plumb dead centre of England and so we get mild temperatures, we're not at the coast, we don't have big wind but saying that everybody else is different. So sit back and we'll have a quick look. Before we get started if you're not already subscribed please hit the subscribe button, check out some more videos, hit the notification bell down the bottom corner and you'll get an email next time there's a video out. Sit back let's check out the grow on tank. That's what we've got at the moment. It's an insulated IBC with decking cladding all the way around it, a three tier backy shower that's plastered in my own business and I've got a, a mesh grid over the top during the day just to stop any cats, any kingfishers or anything else uh, having a crafty uh, feast but it's also got some 32mm 5 ply polycarbonate and that's cut to size and it goes around the backy shower quick reminder of the setup you've got the bottom drain of the IBC coming through the wall in the corner that goes into the 10,000 pond expert very flow that then pumps it up into a 8,000 pond expert spring clean auto that in turn pumps it up into a 1 kilowatt cloverleaf heater that's set at 20, I think it's set at 22 degrees, yeah it's set 22 degrees. That in turn then goes through the tempest up and out through the backy shower. And as you can see, we've got an L component SPC Pro 2 logger currently logging as we speak, and that's got a few days left. And that's logging, as you can see there. That's just a live feed only. See the loop around the live feed, and that is on the heater. So every time the heater kicks in, that one measures the current, etc., and loads it in there. And then after seven days, we'll download the information to the laptop and we'll show you exactly what we've got. This is an industrial one, so it can be used for three phase. So at the moment, we've only got L1 use it, uh, running. So we set up the logger up, this is the outdoor grow on tank is what we're giving it as a title, location sunny Chesterfield and we've set it to record from Monday 27th to Tuesday the 5th of October and it will record the energy used or the electricity used on the heater 
on the outdoor grow on tank. We then enter the tariff that I'm on and I'm on a bulb energy tariff and the day rate is 22.29 pence per kilowatt hours and the night rate is 14.59. Now looking back on the weather for the Chesterfield area from Monday the 27th to Tuesday the 5th you can see that we've had a few highs at 17, 16 degrees but a couple of lows of 7 so we've had a differential swing of about 10 degrees through day and night. The wind chill shouldn't be too bad as we've only had a maximum speed of about 14 miles an hour. Now after downloading the logger you can see from the statistics time scale, the duration, the interval, the data points and also it gives you then the mean value, the medium value, the maximum value, the time at maximum, time at minimum, that sort of stuff. And it also gives you the voltage used, the energy kilowatt hours and the power kilowatt hours. This can then be transferred into a graph so you can see the maximum kilowatt hours used when it was used, the low minimum uh, kilowatt hours when it was used. And you can, you can cross that against any data from the weather report. And if you go back to your costing where you've entered your tariff, as you can see the bulb energy with the tariff ratings it tells me how much energy I've used in the day and at night and also how much it has cost me and as you can see it's cost me £2.31 at night and £8.44 during the day to heat the one kilowatt cloverleaf heater in the outdoor grown tank to give you a more accurate figure on top of the £10.75 you've got 5% VAT which takes it up to £11.28.7 I've just added some gaffer tape all around the edges of the uh, sheets just to seal the gaps. Not necessarily make them airtight, but stop any spiders, dirt, water. So once the water gets in there, the sun turns it green and you end up getting a bit of algae in there. So I'll give it a bit of chance to last a bit. This end there is sealed. I'll show you how we put the covers on. That's it, job's a carrot. And any gassing off that's needed can be done around the back of your shower. There's probably the odd couple of mil where the mesh is but around the back of shower. You can see down the back. Not going to keep all 100% of the heat in, but it's going to definitely keep the wind chill factor out and hopefully help the heater do its job. It's six o'clock at night, it's about now I've been putting the covers on, although one of the nights I was a bit late. In fact, I was very late to be honest. Oops. Fish in the main pond are still eating. The water's 17.8 degrees. I'm guessing the heater may have kicked in a couple of times. They're happy. So we had a visit this weekend and then I think I'll put this covers on. So that's the garden at uh, dusk. So the second week of logging is just completed. Um, the first week was obviously no covers on top at all and the second week was when it's covered at night. As you can see the logger has come up as finished. So that is shutting down. Done. So what I'll do now is just disconnect Do it one hundred. Taking the taters off. I think I can do it this way. Let's see. So basically, taken off the unit so let's just uh, sit back and we'll have a look 
So we set the lager up again with the outdoor grow on at tank and it put covered in there so we know the difference to the reports. Set it up for the time same same time scale and same setup. We'll have a quick look at the weather and as you can see we've got a high of 19 and 18 on a couple of days but it is a, a few lows back down to 8 and 9 so again we've still got a 10 degree swing but nothing major and the wind chill's fine. As you can see from the reading it gives you the uh, mean value, medium value and also the, the times at which it was at its highest and lowest. It also gives you the energy of kilowatt hours and power in kilowatts. If I scroll to the right it would actually give me the CO2 readings as well. Here's a conversion to the chart and as you can see on the first part there's a spike for a wide bit. That'll be the night that I forgot to put the covers on. Temperature did drop down to 7 degrees as well. And then now I've got the all important night rate, day rate and costs. And as you can see the costs have been reduced dramatically down to just £4.71. That's before VAT. So that is a massive difference in a small unit just having the covers on. With the obligatory 5% VAT, the £4.71 equates to £4.94.5p for the 7 days. This reading is for 7 days and 30 minutes which is a total of 168.5 hours. So if you divide the £4.94.5p by 168.5 it gives you a total of 0.029p per hour which then translates to 70 pence per day to heat to 22 degrees using the covers at night only. To the winter the covers will stop on through the day as well. Based on these two logs alone that means that having the covers on is saving 69 pence per day. So if we're going to heat it for roughly six months that's 182 days. So 182 days times by 69p equals 125 pound 92p. For the cost of the polycarbonate sheet, it's going to well and truly pay for itself within three months anyway. Thanks a lot for watching the video so far. Just to recap, that is two weeks heating the pond. The first week without the covers on and the second week with the covers on. It isn't going to be the same for everybody else's pond set up. It's just that's how I cover and heat my grow on tank and that's how much it costs me. It's not going to be the same for everybody, it's not going to be the same for every setup, but that is how I cover and heat my pond, and that's how much it costs me. Like I say, thanks a lot for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, check out some more videos, hit the notification bell, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. From a warm autumnal evening in Chesterfield, happy ponding.